Speciation is the phenomenon by which an existing species splits into two separate species. I have created this demonstration in order to show how speciation works. Now, I want you to imagine a peaceful meadow containing a population of beautiful flowers. Now, this population of flowers interbreeds with itself. They continuously interbreed, produce new generations, and as a result, they continue to be the same species because any changes get mixed back into the population and if they're beneficial, will dominate the population. If they're negative, won't. However, any significant evolutionary changes will occur to the entire population. We're not going to get two radically different types of flowers as long as they're continuously continuing to exchange their genes. However, let's say something rather catastrophic happens. A nearby dam breaks, and a river now cuts across the meadow. Now, what this does is split the population of flowers in half. At this point, the flowers on either side of the river do not have access to each other, and thus cannot breed, and thus have the potential to become radically different. In our hypothetical scenario, let's say that on the right side of the river, we have a cow farm. Now, the number one threat to the flowers on this side of the river is being eaten by grazing cattle. Now, on the left side of the meadow, the number one threat is tourists. You see, that area is public property, unlike the right side, which is owned by the owner of all of the cattle. And because they have decided to actually sell raft rides down the river, tourists can stop, pick flowers, and get back in the raft. They can't do that on the other side because they would be trespassing. They can only do that on the left side of the river. Now, over time, various mutations begin to accumulate, changing the color of the flower petals. On the left side, the flowers are under selective pressure to be less appealing to tourists. That means that they should look less pretty and blend in better with the grass around them. On the right side, the goal is to get noticed by the cows so that the cows will not eat you. So they are under selection to be more apparent to someone looking for them. So over time, mutations begin to occur such that the flowers look radically different. As you can see, the flowers on the left side are beginning to blend in somewhat better and also look somewhat more stupid, and the ones on the right side are under selective pressure to be extremely noticeable, and that is exactly what we get in the phenotype. The process of evolution continuously exaggerates this difference to the point where, eventually, the two of them, were they brought back together to breed, could only bring forth infertile hybrids. And so continuously it goes, with the right side becoming more noticeable as to avoid cattle, and the left side becoming less noticeable as to avoid tourists. Now, whilst the changes in color are occurring, it's likely that other changes are occurring as well. For example, the flowers on the left side, in order to better avoid tourists, are likely to develop a very unpleasant smell, whilst the right side is going to continue to be under pressure to taste worse and worse and worse to the cattle. And both of them would develop changes that make it easier to survive in either of their two environments. For example, the roots would become better at gathering nutrients, the pollen would become easier for pollinating insects to spread, etc. Eventually, the difference between the two becomes extraordinarily drastic, and their intended survival strategies become extremely obvious. We eventually get to the point where the two are so genetically different that they are not interfertile. They could not possibly breed with each other, even if they were mixed back together again and allowed to. For example, were our hypothetical river to dry up, and allow the two populations of flowers, now the two separate species of flowers, to have access to each other, they couldn't interbreed. They're simply too different. 
They can exchange all the pollen they want. They will never bring forth a new offspring. At this point, the two organisms have speciated. They are now separate creatures. Though the hypothetical example presented is entirely fictitious, this phenomenon has been observed on several occasions. Numerous speciation events are well documented and shown to occur in similar examples to the one I presented. The example I presented was fictional, however it was a description of a factual phenomenon. It was an example of what one would call a very typical speciation event. You have a population, it gets cut in half such that it is now divided into two slices that do not have contact with each other. They are under different selective pressures, and thus they change differently, causing them to eventually become so different that they can no longer interbreed. Speciation events are evolution in action. They are cases in which a combination of a random genetic mutation and natural selection cause one species to turn into two entirely separate species. Now, not only can we observe speciation events in the present, but using different methods from nearly every field of biology, we can create concordant phylogenetic trees and therefore know of speciation events that have occurred in the past. Indeed, every single split on a phylogenetic tree is a speciation event, and if you follow these forks in the road forward, you can see just how radically different they become.